Um, Perfect. All right. Let's jump into the questions. If anyone has any questions for Chi Chi as we go through, um, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. I hope we have a little bit of time to pull from there as well, but I'll ask a couple to get us started. Um, what would you say is the most common mistake when people are putting together their resume or like reviewing their resume for a job? Oof, I love this. And I feel like this advice is very relatable because this is what I used to tell people when I was um, working at junior college and I would do like when it was just me, a team of one, maybe like 60 resume reviews in one week. And it was like resume review time until I built the team. And I would tell the career coaches the same thing is, and I feel like this would be relatable, treat your resume like you're building out a user experience. Like when I am doing a resume review, the first thing I ask people is, how do you expect me? How do you want me to navigate this resume? Like, how do you want me to look at this first? Because the formatting is a little off. So for example, some people might have um, their skills in the top left corner, and then they're about me in this corner here. And then in this corner here, they're putting their, their experience. And I'm just like, my eyes don't know where to look. It's actually not a good user experience. And I would bridge that as developers and same thing as product managers. When I look at your resume, I just want to make sure I can navigate it very quickly. I only have a few seconds. So right away, if you're making me jump my eyes from corner to corner just to figure out what your story is and you are a developer or product manager, ooh, I don't think you really didn't understand user experience. So it's super important for anything. Think about the user experience. Think about how do I want this busy hiring manager, this busy recruiter? How do I want to make sure they can see the things that are important? How do I want to make sure they navigate my resume the way it's intended? And I think sometimes when we have folks that are more of this creative fields or developers and product management, they tend to get lost in the design. And they think they have to go splashy and go over the top with the way it looks. And I'm not a fan of Canva resumes. Yeah, they might look great, but... In ATS systems, they don't read well. So it's, it's you can still do a nicely well look resume in a document, change the font colors, make show your personality. If you have a logo, put it in there. But it's really important to understand like what is the goal of this resume and to prioritize the user experience. So there's a nice flow where, where leaders and the hiring managers and recruiters can get that information quickly. And that's the biggest mistake is people not focusing on that user experience. That is awesome and such a great way to put it. I saw so many people nodding their heads and I'm sure that I was doing that the whole time as well too. Yeah, Really, yeah. really great feedback. Um, next question, um, say, you know, for all of our folks who have just been through our bootcamp program or our sprint program, how could they effectively showcase their skills and qualifications when transitioning into, uh, you know, a PM or even for the designers and developers as well, if yeah. it was their first experience in a formal tech team position <laughs> also love this because when i worked at juno everyone was doing a career change we had baristas who want to be developers drummers who want to be developers accountants who want to be developers right like of course at some point as an accountant you're gonna be like this is this isn't for me so like you know so totally makes sense when they'd be like i want a career change i'm like oh it makes sense um but so we always had to be like I always tell people just because you're changing careers doesn't mean you need to forget what brought you there, right? So it's always about the concept of transferable skills. And before I even get to people um, working on their resume, I would always do this in our career curriculum at Juno College. Before I even got to the resume component, maybe like week seven, week eight of boot camp, we were in the classroom every week talking about careers. The team and I, we spent the first three weeks doing deep self-reflection. Because when I would review people's resumes and they'd come to me, it was clear that they never thought critically about their skills, who they are, what their past skills are, and the way I would interrogate them about their jobs that they see, have on their resumes. I'm like, I know what this job is about, but like, you're not talking about it like the way it needs to be, which means you didn't think about your skills critically. So my advice is it's very important to first take some time to do self-reflection. Think about what are some skills that I had in my past career that has served me well? 
right? And these skills might be, I call them critical skills and core skills, not soft skills. The soft skills really downplays it and they are so important. So what are my critical and core skills that I, that has served me well in my career that I can align clearly back to this new career? And then what are the, some of those technical skills from my old career that I can align back into my new career? Like I think a lot of people get lost. I have to leave it from behind. So doing some of that self-reflection and as well as when you do that self-reflection, when you think about these skills, align it with true examples. So if you say, I have strong leadership of skills, don't forget and you're up to be like, this is how, and this is how I'm going to use these skills in this scenario as a product manager. So it's really important that you start to craft and that story on how you're going to use those skills and, and it'll make it clear for you to be like, you know what, I'm not starting all over again. I'm not, yeah, I'm doing career change, but I'm just leaning into this aspects that make me great and using it in a different field that'll make me feel more fulfilled. Because a lot of people have that misconception that everything has to go. And I'm like, what a waste of a life and a time. Like, come on. Like <laughs> you had a life before you became a product leader, a product manager. So like, let's lean into that. And so even if you worked in customer service, knowing how to deliver excellent interactions, giving your Starbucks to customers is the same. You could translate it around designing great experiences as a product manager. <laughs> like it's about thinking deeply beyond what you're doing and really digging deep and figuring out how to align those skills. I love that. Yeah, that's really, really great to think about. I think imposter syndrome often will get in the way and people don't value their skills as, as equivalent as they should for sure. So that's a really great reminder to really reflect on that. Um, let me see if there's any questions in the yeah, chat. The as well. Oh, perfect, perfect. I saw them coming through. Um, Experista turned developer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nermina asked, do you think it, do you believe it is best to submit a one page resume? Listen, I love a good one pager. So if you can fill it in in one page, please lean into that one and done because like me, okay. My resume, like, I'm, I don't want to lie. I have two, but then it's different. Like I'm applying to different fields. Um, on my resume, I might talk also about my speaking engagements. I might talk about other things that align well for the industry, but for y'all, I would recommend that you keep it to your, um, your, your profile. So a few sentences about who you are and, and what you're bringing to the table and something that really grabs and piques the hiring managers and recruiters interest. And then I like to say, okay, you've introduced me. Actually, I'll go through the format. So it's like your name and like maybe product manager, you have a headline. Then below that, you're going to have your profile, a few sentences that really pique like I can pique your reader's interest. And then after that, it's like, cool, you told me a little bit about yourself, some little skills, some little sprinkle sprinkle. How about you tell me about some skills? And then you have a skill section. And then after that, you have a skill section. I'm going to be like, cool, like where did you acquire those skills? When it comes to your education, especially when you just finish a new program, I think your education needs to be at the top when you just graduated from a new program, right? I My education is at the bottom of my resume because I left McMaster in 2009. Like no one cares. No one cares that I'm a sociology grad, like truly. So like, but it's important if you don't have this previous product management like experience that you don't put it to the bottom because right away they're going to see then your non, your work experience is not product management related and be over it. You know, so you're going to have to like, how do I keep hooking them in? Okay, let me highlight my education and product management first. And then after that, and then I'm going to put um, projects, if you're doing your projects and highlight that. And then I'm going to choose a couple work experiences that I feel will really sell my transferable skills. That really makes sense for that. I could really bridge that story. And then below that, if you have some community involvement, some writing, some blog, great. And also in your headline, don't forget your, your link. So like your LinkedIn, your portfolio link, and you can do that in a one page, especially when it's not spaces and being taken up by like design that's like not needed. And if you're not putting things in boxes in the corner and doing all that, it's smushed, right? So um, definitely that would be the flow. And I think it's possible in a one pager to do that. 
Awesome. I think that's great. And someone just asked like how much information is good information in the resume. And I think that you, you really gave like a good walkthrough of like where yeah. to put things, how to prioritize yeah. things. Yeah, That's perfect. Um, another question here for PM roles, how many working projects do you think one needs to showcase in their portfolio before recruiters would be interested? Yeah. I think, well, when it comes to a, if you have actual working projects that you can share from like, um, previous like PM related roles, definitely high at that. But I feel like in the most case in this group, it might just be projects gained through this program, correct? So um, I used to tell folks on Juno College um, for their development projects in their portfolio to highlight at least two to three. And I used to say like, when you highlight your projects, make sure you have the project name, the title, a link that they can go see it live or if there's a portfolio to it or whatever, but then have um, a few, like a two sentence description, be like, what this project is about, um, what skills was it used to create it? Like it really leaned heavily into user testing. We really leaned heavily into user research or we created personas or here's examples of personas I've created. Like, like you could even like make it up like persona project example. And then, and then another project that highlight maybe um, the user journey mapping of that project. And then maybe the third project can highlight everything together, a different project. So you can be creative, but it's very, very important that you think about what you want to show like I, it's like yes I don't have this past work experience but I understand this feels now and here's an example of when I've done like user mapping and I did that for this project so I'm going to draw your attention to that and then this next project I'm going to draw your attention to the the research I did like so you can make it fun you can you can switch it up but always think about like what do I want to tell them what do I want to lean into and what do I want to show so two to three I think is a good way to do it. Perfect. I I really like the way that you explain that and calling out certain aspects because for a lot of our folks who, especially the PMs who go through our sprint program and then the boot camp, even if they work on the same idea, they could really call out, you know, the user research that they did in the sprint program and then call out working on a cross-functional team and the experiences there in the boot camp as well. So showcasing two very different pieces. Um and that, that's wonderful too. And of course, people could use a tool like uh, Natalie's team created to you know, work with a new team, connect in the community to continue working on different projects. Obviously, everybody wants to be doing it. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, let me just double check if there's any other questions and then we will wrap up shortly. Um, oh yeah, Supriya asked what, and this is very similar to a question I have, what are some popular websites or some specific tools that you would recommend for enhancing a resume? Yeah. So when it comes to resumes, like I'm, I'm a, par I'm, I'm partial to the Google doc. So you already know where I stand on that. <laughs> um, um, but you could definitely change it up with like putting some font colors. I know people who've added their design logo, whatever. And then when it comes to portfolios, um, at Juno college, they actually built their own portfolios and like the, 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 it would give them like their templates, like, cause they were developers. So they would actually build their own website. So I wasn't too concerned about directing them to like different portfolio making websites, but honestly, I'm sure there's like a super, with a super, y'all, y'all are researchers. I'm sorry, your product people. So a super, an easy Google search <laughs> called, popular product manager portfolio websites i'm sure you using your user your research skills will find something that works um so i'm sure on wix.com and there's so many great things i even canva i don't care even though i don't like canva resumes i use canva for a lot of my presentations a lot of my like branding and and you can easily i know make a portfolio site on canva so i'm not knocking canva canva like saves me as a small business owner i just don't think for like a resume to upload in the ats system it's very compatible and then in terms of managing your job search process i highly recommend that you use maybe like move beyond a spreadsheet and use like a job search management tool called um, Hunter. That's what we used to use at Juno College would give um, them Hunter account. So it's H-U-N-T-R. They're so cool. They dropped the E. Uh, Hunter, uh, no E.com. And um, use that to manage your job search process because you could like upload your, keep track of your applications, sending cold messages, your follow-ups. Um, all of those things are so important and you can get very overwhelmed when you're just applying, like have some great system to help you manage this project. So treat it like a project, right? Treat your job search like a project, have the tools to help manage it to make it easy. Um, but yeah, that would be my advice in terms of some tools to help you. 
Perfect. One last question. We are almost at time, but this is a really good question um, that I've had asked a few times as well, too. And then we'll wrap up. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Um, how important is using a cover letter when applying for jobs? Another person seconded the question and said very polarized <laughs> opinions on cover letters. Um, I've heard it from different recruiters, too. So curious. I call them pain letters, like truly like. But like, again, this recruitment process is such a biased process as much as we want to say it's not at the end of the day they're choosing you based off of the skills like what make what if i hate the word fit um i like to tell companies think about like that how people add to your culture but at the end of the day if they're cho they're choosing it based off what they see in your skills and the biggest way to fall out of a recruitment process is not following clearly their instructions so if it says include a cover letter mandatory 100% now, if it doesn't say include a cover letter and it says add resume, and then they have an optional like cover letter or additional document like button, if they're not, it's optional, meaning like they didn't think it was necessary in the recruitment process for them. Um, but it's very like, but if you want to add anything else for us to know, go right ahead. And if you want to take that initiative, why not? So maybe you don't really make this long cover letter. I don't think cover letters should be long. Maybe just make a nice intro. Treat like an intro email, like talk about yourself, say, here's what you can expect reading my resume. I'm going to draw, I want to draw your attention to two to three projects, two, to three skills, um, why I'm interested in your company. Uh, first compliment the company right out the gate. I will always say stroke their ego before you talk about yours. Um, and, and, and so you can use that as a way to set the tone, but the also, if it does not ask for it and there's no optional, don't. These recruiters are busy and they put a lot of time in their recruitment process to say what's important to us. If they say we need resume only and then there's no like optional field to add additional document, don't upload a cover letter with your resume. They, they know cover letters exist. They have made the point to decision to expedite their busy recruitment process to not waste time reading cover letters, which is why your about me section or your profile on your resume needs to like be like a mini little few sentences, grab their attention. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My lawyer's calling because we just bought a house. It's one oh. o'clock. We were supposed to meet at one o'clock with my husband for this call. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. We will let so you like, go. <laughs> so sorry. No, yeah, we're over time. Oh my gosh. I thought we'd be done right at one. But um, if you need anything else, folks, just like add, I'll call, I'll send her email. No, I'll call her back. It's okay. Um, I'll call her really quickly back. If you um need to send me an email, feel free. Um, or actually find me on LinkedIn, Chi Chi, I both my name. I'll be the only one that will come up, but so sorry. I'm ending this way. I, yeah. Cause I thought we were going to be done like five, two. Yes. Uh, we're a little close. Home. Yeah. <laughs> that I, is didn't okay. realize, that I didn't is okay. realize the time. Oh my yes. gosh. So sorry. That's okay. okay. Thank you so much. I will be sure to share your LinkedIn. Okay. We'll drop it in yeah. the chat yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I'll pass it over to Shifumi to wrap up. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Bye. Thank you, Chi Chi, for joining. And good luck with your house <laughs> purchase. Bye. Bye. I know the struggles. All right, Shifumi. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Happy Friday. Uh, um, actually, I wanted to say we, we didn't, I don't think we've taken a photo yet. So if, if you're comfortable, please turn on your camera so we can take a group photo. Uh, so you can, team, you can unspotlight me so we can all take a photo while we close this out. Um, I'm so sorry we're a bit over time. Um, but I just wanted to say amazing, incredible presentations all around. I had a wonderful time listening to everyone's uh, pitch. Uh, so thank you all for the incredible hard work that you all put into your presentations. And have a happy Friday. Looking forward to seeing you all in the rest of the community. And yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day. And happy holidays for those who are about to be celebrating. Bye, everyone.